Yeah, buddy. What's up, guys? This is Polo, and this is a tutorial on how to um, do what I did yesterday in my clip. <laughs> and, um, and for those of you that don't know, RSMB stands for Real Smart Motion Blur, and it's a plugin for Sony Vegas Pro 10. And I'm not entirely sure. I guess it's on like uh, After Effects or something like that. But I do not have After Effects. Well, I mean, I do, but yeah. What? Perfor what? Shut up. My computer's performance is not slow. You're, you're imagining things. Anyways, I guess one funny thing about it is there's this Dell thing up here, and there's a little piece of paper file thing that I was trying to delete before, but I can't get it out from back there, so it's just like, Arr! so I'll have to go and turn that thing off so I can go delete that. I don't know how it got there, but it did. Anyways. So, I guess I for screen capture now, I'm just going to stick with Hypercam 2 for, like, my random tutorials and stuff like that. So, alright, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to open up Sony Vegas, and here's the clip from yesterday. But I'm gonna, going to use it with a commentary I'm about to do. So, let's go through the settings. Um, let's see... The template I used was, what did I use, HD, there we go, actually no that's not what I used, HDV 20 whatever, this one, <laughs> HDV um, 720-30p, which is um, pretty much just standard if you use, uh, if you're going to be making videos in 720p, like a, a commentary. Um, if you're going to do a montage or something like that, um, you're going to want to use 59.94, basically 60 frames per second, uh, just so it gives you more frames to work with, like if you're doing slow motion or crap like that. Let's see, field order progressive scan, pretty much always going to want to use progressive scan, uh, pixel aspect ratio 1, and if you've ever wondered why you do this, um, your TV sees a pixel as a rectangle, but a computer sees it, I don't know if it's the computer or the internet, but either way, it sees it as a square. So really, um, if you're doing YouTube videos, commentaries, anything like that, that's pretty much what you want to use. Anything else, I mean, you can, but it, there's more that can go wrong with that. So yeah, and since this is just a commentary, I'm going to do frame rate at 29.97. Pixel format, um, any one of these really. Um, I like to use 32-bit floating point full range because it just looks a little bit better um, composing gamma it, it doesn't matter 22 or 2.222 2, 2, 2, whatever um, I mean it I really can't notice the difference I'm just superstitious so I use that full rendering quality of course you want that set as best motion blur Gaussian uh, deinterlace method you want this on on interpolate fields pretty much no matter what you want on interpolate fields because on uh, if you record a video at 720p, it's already progressive, so that, that <clears throat> that's pretty much not going to do anything. But if you have, if you record a video at uh, 1080i, i stands for interlaced, so you're going to want to use uh, progressive scan and uh, interpolate fields to eliminate those annoying, like, it's going to look like the screen is, has lines through it. It's going to look like it has like bars or whatever going through it. So that's why you're going to want to have that. Um, adjust project media to better match render, blah, blah, blah. Or source media to better match render settings. And then start all projects with this. And no matter how many times I do that, it never does. So yeah. All right, now that I've got a blank thing, I'm just going to go ahead and minimize that. And I'm going to come over here to the video I'm going to use. Oh. Just drag it and drop it. I guess I could do this with the <laughs> both at the same time, just kind of like shift click or whatever. Ta da! Now, here's what we are going to do. This is I've already recorded the commentary, so I'm just going to drop the video down to the timeline, bring the commentary in. I'm going to. Dude, you know what? I freaking forgot to. Hang on. Delete. Delete. I forgot my intro. Silly me, go up here to sexy intros, yeah, it's intro two, Shazam. Ba-boom, there we go. <laughs> Ba-boom, Shazam. Sound effects. 
All right, now I'm going to bring my little line right over here. Boom. I'm going to bring my gameplay down. I mean, normally you want to stack the video like like on each other, but I mean, this is fine. And then bring this. There we go. All right. Now, um, one embarrassing thing, um, always adjust your volume levels. So I'm going to bring that down to... Just adjust it to where it sounds good for you. I don't know, 32. Um, oh, that's my commentary. Threw me off. All right. I'm actually going to bump the commentary up to 5 with the snowball. And bring the game volume down to about 30, 35, something like that. Um, I'm probably just going to adjust it later, but that's basically it. Ballparking it. Let's see. Stretch that back out. Now... What we're going to do is I'm going to go to the end of the video on to event pan and crop. And normally people will just move it. So hang on, let me move it to a spot where you can see. There we go. Oh, Jesus. Look at how blurry that is. Hang on, let's fix that real fast. Right click on the video and go to properties. Reduce interlace, reduce interlace flicker, disable resample. You're done. And then boom, look, it's not all blurry and whatnot anymore. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do now, let me resize, there we go, is some people, I've already set it down, I have it set to, to HD uh, to eliminate the black lines on the on the top and, and right side right here. So what I'm going to do, um, what else, I'm, or something else I'm going to do, there we go, is I'm going to come down here, another preset I have, Cinema 2, or actually no, Cinema 2 Blops, there we go. And what that does is, whoops, basically all I did was I clicked, uh, or I unclicked lock aspect ratio, and I just came in here and I went to the top and the bottom, and I just kind of filled with it. And not only that, once you do that, you're going to have to just click on the empty space right here, and then move this so like it doesn't block out any of the HUD or anything like that. So let's see, back to preset, there we go. And it just gives it a cool, it doesn't actually change the aspect ratio of the video. It just gives it a cool little, like, uh, cinematic kind of feel. Um, I just, it just looks cool. But you don't want to do it too much because you don't want to, like, cut out a lot of the video. Let's see. It just looks neat. All right. Now that my, my volume levels are adjusted, my resample is disabled, my, my interlace flicker is reduced, I'm going to minimize these to make everything look pretty. Minimize all that because I am done. I'll save it here in a minute. I'm going to bring this down. All right, video effects. Here's the good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. All right, first things first, um, pretty, pretty basic color corrections. Not even really color corrections. I'm going to go Lola, sharpen. I'm going to go to sharpen. I got this one, I got a preset already. It's called Polo. Pop it in right there. Basically, it's just the amount of sharpen. 0.1, that's about it. Or you can use reset to none. 0.1 reset to none, that's pretty much it as far as Black Ops goes. You might need to increase it for Modern Warfare 2 or any older games where it's not really as sharp. But you don't want to overdo it because it makes it look silly. But pretty much 0.1 is what I use for Black Ops 9 times out of 10. And since this is such a bright map, Normally, I will go down here to levels. Where's levels? There we go. Normally, I'll go to levels and add brighten, but since it's a, it'll completely just like wash out the map because it's so bright, I do not want to do that. So, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go up here to color corrector secondary, studio RBG to computer RBG, drag that down to the video line, and shazam. It brightens it up a little bit, but it adds a little bit of contrast. I don't know. It makes it look good, in my opinion. Let's see now to get to the meat of the matter. The the really cool cause alright, look, right here, oh I'd click play, but it's gonna come through the microphone. Um, I mean it looks fine, but it's not a uh, real smart motion blur. Now there's a de uh, a default and then my preset. Now you're gonna download it, um oh just search for it on YouTube, you'll find it. Uh, look for the video by Jcraft. Let's see, drag my preset down to the timeline. Oh, one quick tip. Um, if you have a bunch of clips and you want to add color correction to all of them, drag it down to the, I'll show you. I'll just go ahead and delete that. 
uh, drag it down to the gray video box right here like where it's got all the controls and stuff drag it down to there and it will still add it but it'll add it to the entire track just a little fun fact for you guys a little tip and then right here if you can already see I'm gonna try to move down the timeline now what it's gonna do for me anyways there we go oh perfect example all right see how oh well it went away but basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna there's gonna be a, a little bit of blur around like your gun whatever's really close to you but then the outs you know what's out in front of you is gonna have you know not like a ridiculous amount of blur but it's gonna blur just a little bit more and it just looks cool that's basically what real smart motion blur does and whenever you get that here are my presets so just go ahead and come back copy those whatever you want man since I'm done with all of that I am going to come up here to render as I think I've got everything alright now here is where I figured something else out alright so save as type and what I used to use is main concept AVC by you know slash AAC MP4 but I'm playing around with Sony AVC MP4 uh, M2TS AVC down here and I don't know why I just am now I've already got a preset template so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what that is I'm gonna go to custom and basically why I'm using this is look this is what it's for setting is to create higher quality 16 16 9 files suitable for uploading to internet sites I mean dude why wouldn't I use this and pretty much I I've integrated my same alright I went down here to the internet uh, 1280 by 720 30p and I click that preset and I adjusted it I'll just go ahead and show you um, video format AVC frame size of course high definition symptom and then from right here you can go ahead and change it to to whatever but I've got it set on that because that's what I want to um, let's see allow source or just frame size no because it's already it's the same thing profile baseline um, entropy coding Mm, I don't know what that is, but that's what it's set at. <laughs> uh, I'll have to do more my my homework on it. Uh, frame rate, of course, twenty nine point nine seven. Um, and you don't want to click allow source to adjust frame rate. I don't know if it does because I mean one, it's the same thing, so it wouldn't do anything. And two, um, I noticed when I rendered the other way with main concept, uh, it would take frame or like 30 frames per second and take it down to like 15 I have no idea why that's why it would be all like choppy and weird but I figured out so just if you render that way just don't click this and your video will be fine maybe it was just me I'm not entirely sure uh, field order of course progressive scan pixel aspect ratio is 1 and then my bitrate is 20 million now why is my bitrate 20 million when I record in 13.5 I don't know it just is I just go with it I mean it makes the file size a little bit bigger um, another superstition thing I mean honestly I don't think it makes it better but that's just what I do because I'm superstitious and weird uh, and then encode mode automatic go to audio um, definitely AAC because that's the only thing you can pick sample rate um, 48,000 bit rate 192,000 um, stereo let's see format mp4 of course I think that's the only thing you can pick oh well never mind uh, just yeah <laughs> mp4 and then video render settings since you've already got everything just you know use project settings some people go to best but I mean I already have good settings so I'm just gonna use project settings why not and then okay and then let's see what am I going to call this I don't even know what I'm gonna call it but then basically whenever you're done you just click save the video is gonna render and you'll be right as rain so yeah that is it, guys. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Peace.